Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. But, um, in my 42 years of living, I have made many plans. And many of my plans have either, um, have either failed or my plans, uh, um, they didn't come to fruition the way I planned them to come out. And, uh, and there's been some few good ones that I've actually accomplished. But I, I, I know one thing, as I've gotten older, as I've gotten wiser, as I've gotten more mature, I've realized that, you know what, um, I've had to come to a place of acknowledgement. Everybody say acknowledgement. I think so many times we, we, we're trying to plan for, for so many amazing things, whether it's your personal life, whether it's goals, whether it's uh, a better family, a better career, a better job, a better whatever. You finish the sentence. But, uh, but I've realized as, as I've acknowledged and accepted my reality that there have been times in my life where I literally didn't really have a plan. And whether you have a plan or not, guess what? You're still planning to fail either way. Might as well use that energy and plan something amazing. And, uh, and as I was just preparing and, and thinking about Christmas, I started thinking, man, I wonder what the people of, of, of the Bible era were like. I mean, they kept hearing God's plan. They kept hearing about this Savior, the birth of a king. The birth of someone that would come and deliver us and, and, and break the sin over our life. I wonder what they were doing. I wonder what, what they were planning for as they were waiting and waiting and waiting. And uh, I, I've, I've got this revelation. Preparation always leads to manifestation. It does. And God is the perfect example of preparation. That led to the greatest manifestation of Jesus Christ. And you know what's pretty awesome? When God plans something, man, his plans last for eternity. Think about it. He planned the greatest week of the year called Christmas. And 2,000 years later, we're all still celebrating Christmas. It never ends. It's just like when God plans something, I mean, think about it. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says this. He says, I know the plans I have for who? You. There are plans to prosper you, not to harm you. There are plans to give you a hope with some future. And so as I started just thinking about Christmas and, and planning, uh, I'm thinking, man, I wonder how many of us uh, are not planning to make this the best Christmas ever. Or I wonder how many of us are not planning for something greater, something better for 2018 in our life. Let me show you an example because here you have a man by the name of Isaiah. God downloads a plan to him. And Isaiah begins to go on preparation. 700 years before Jesus was born, God was already preparing something amazing. And he reveals, he reveals his plan to, to the people of God. Now check this out. In, in Isaiah 9, verse 3 through 4, it says, You will make the nation great. You will give them great joy. They will be glad before you as with the joy of what? gathering time. You know what? This is the time when we're all gathering together. There are so many people right now gathering in churches, gathering in homes. You're gathering with friends, family, and we're celebrating the plan that God had for us. And that is a wonderful Savior. Look at this. And so he says, and as men have joy when they divide the riches taken after battle, for you will break the heavy loads from their neck and shoulders. Come on, that's what God came to do. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came to, to Lift the burden, destroy the yoke, whatever heaviness you may have this Christmas, come on, the purpose of Jesus was to lift that off of us. And he says, and you will break the power of those who made it hard for them as at the battle of Midian. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Think about the awesome plan that God had for us. What we're celebrating right now was God's divine plan. Once again, preparation will always lead to manifestation. I don't know what you're preparing for. I don't know what kind of family you have right now. I know that we're just days away from celebrating Christmas with family. I know that there may be some family at odds right now. 
And you could either keep having that kind of odd, or you can decide right now, you know what? I'm going to plan and prepare a better Christmas than what I'm already seeing that's going to happen. I'm going to plan to have a better attitude. I'm going to plan to have more faith this Christmas, to really believe that God can turn my situation around. Let me give you a definition for prepare. Prepare means to make ready, look at this, to make ready beforehand. To make ready beforehand for some purpose. Come on, I'm sure many of you say here, I have a purpose for some use. Somebody says, well, I want to be used by God or for some activity. I don't know about you, but man, I know that God has given me some opportunities for some awesome activity in 2018. And that's awesome. You know what? We all, we all know that we have a purpose. We all know that, that God wants to use us. And we all know that we want to be active with the things of God. But that's the problem with, with many of us is that we, we, we acknowledge, right? We acknowledge or we have the knowledge that I need to do this or I want to do that. But you know what we fail to do? We fail to act knowledge. Act knowledge. If you guys can act knowledge. Act knowledge means we fail to apply the knowledge that we have. It's kind of like that whole thing. I know I need to start eating healthy. But it's just information. And I don't act upon eating healthy. You know, I know I have to lose a little bit of weight. That's awesome knowledge. But, man, I'm sitting down at the burger joint, man, tearing up a double-double. You know what I'm saying? It's Christmas. I'll start in January. And so the problem is that we have to start changing by planning and preparing what God wants to do in our life. Once again, I know that Christmas is like right around the corner. I've even been thinking, okay, how am I going to make this Christmas better than last year's Christmas? How am I going to make 2018 better? And I'm going to take us in the next week, man, I'm going to take us strong until the 31st that we'll be here at church and really help us plan and prepare what God wants to do in our life. we got to be better planners, man. we got to. Because then we'll never experience the plan. The plan. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Aren't you glad that at least he knows the plan? The question is, we have to take this season to say, God, I want to seek your face a little bit more because I want you to whisper the plan that you have for my life. I'm tired of wasting year after year, day after day, trying to do my plans, and then my plans never come to fruition. They just don't happen. Let me also throw something at you. I think there are some of you right now sitting in here that maybe – the plan that you've created is not the plan that God wanted. And I know that's hard to say because you've already invested so much time in that plan. And now it's like, heck no. I didn't come this far to give up on my plan. <laughs> For example, I said when I was, when I was married and, 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 and just starting off family, uh, I told my wife, I'm going to be a cop. And you know what? I started planning and preparing all the steps to become a cop. I did everything. I was even an internal investigator, so I was doing everything. I, got, I was good friends with district attorney, city attorney, judges, cops, you name it. I planned it. I prepared it. Man, I was good at it. And then God said, that's not my plan. What you, what you mean that's not your plan? Yeah, we're going to call you the pastor. Pastor? Pastor? That's a depressing life, pastor. God, it's like people leave you all the time, pastor. So, so I, I just, I, I, want us, I want us to think this Christmas, to, to not just think, think about a baby in a manger. We're, we're talking about a savior who's already giving us a future, a future. He planned a future with great hope for us to accomplish. You see, I think so many of us, we, we focus so much, so much on the efficiency, but we don't focus on the effectiveness. You want to be efficient on a lot of things. And hey, listen, I'm all for efficiency. But if, not, if we're not being effective, then we're wasting time. Right? And then so many people can, can get caught up with, with activity. Okay, I love activity. Trust me, I love activity. But God says, I don't want you to be active because you can be active and wasting a lot of time doing nothing. I want you to have progress. This is the why God so loved the world. Listen, 
God had to acknowledge. He had to acknowledge the fact that the world was full of sin, that the world, his people that he loved were separated from him because sin came in and separated us from God. And he acknowledged the fact, think about it, how is it that God planned and prepared this amazing, wonderful thing called the earth and then within that plan, we had someone named Satan who came and ruined it. I mean, that's a question I asked for because he is a perfect God, isn't he? Isn't that interesting? Like, okay, I wonder if he just, if he, if he allowed that because he gives us this wonderful gift called choice. Think about it. You can plan all you want. You can, you can prepare all you want. But at the end of the day, I wonder what's God's perfect plan for your life right now. Let me read you a verse because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and make sure that you don't leave here and thinking like, oh, my God, pastor just doesn't believe in my dream anymore. No, it's not that. No. Proverbs 19.21 says this. A person may, may have many plans in their heart, but the Lord's purpose wins out in the end. Hey, guys, you guys have that at the end of the verse there, please. It's, there you go, Proverbs. A person may have many plans in their heart, but the Lord's purpose wins out in the end. Aren't you glad that his wins? He's got purpose for your life. The question is, what are we going to do? Are we going to, are we going to plan? You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I know so many people. I mean, when we, when, we, when we celebrate Christmas, we're celebrating this amazing Savior. And, and God's plan was perfect. And it was so perfect that he perfected our flaws. He perfected our sins. He, he came and he washed us and he cleansed us and he gave us newness of life. I mean, his plan was flawless. It's perfect. It's still perfect this day. But, but he had a lot of preparation. Sometimes you, you, you talk to people and they say, you know what, I, I, I really, I really want to do that. But, you know, what's the least amount of books, Pastor, uh, that, that I can read but still be effective? I, I say none. <laughs> none? Well, what do you mean none? Well, you're asking me for the least. God doesn't want you to do the least. God wants you to do the more. God wants you to be very effective. God wants you to be accomplishing something in this life called his divine plan. This is a season where we want to open our eyes. And I'm serious, in the next few weeks, three weeks, we're going to hit this very hard. God has a plan for you and our job is to prepare. Do you guys remember the story? I think it's in Matthew 25. I'm not going to go there for sake of time. But do you guys remember the story of the ten virgins? Yeah? Okay, remember that five were known as foolish? And then other five were known as what? Wise. And so the five foolish and the five wise were hanging out together. Okay, just like us, we're all hanging out together. We're all gathered together. But just because we're all gathered together doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that we're all following the plan of God. And so they're all hanging out together and the story goes, Jesus is telling the story, hey, there was a big wedding that was going to take place and they were waiting for the, for the, for the groom and, and he took too long and, and so they kind of got a little anxious and they're waiting. But uh, five of them said, well, we're going to go and chill for a little bit, but we're going to take a jar of oil with us so that we don't run out. We're going to plan, okay, we're going to plan while we're waiting. We're going to prepare our wick while we're waiting so that if he continues to prolong, we'll have enough so that when we hear that he's coming, we'll make it right on time to be with the groom and it'll be awesome. The five foolish ones said, ah, I'll be back soon. And they go out and they're doing their thing. They're living their life like so many people in church. So many people because just living, just like, oh, I'm just waiting for the Lord, just waiting for the Lord. But you're not planning. You're not preparing. Come on. Planning or preparing leads to manifestation. And what happens? Man, they hear the sound. The groom is coming. The groom is coming. And the five foolish ones get back to the, to the hall. And then all of a sudden, they're running out of oil. They're like, oh, my God. They look at the five wise and say, give us some of your oil before we run out. They said, heck to the no. 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 We planned. We prepared. We were ready. If we give you our oil... Man, we're going to lose out, and then we won't be ready. Well, you know the story, right? So the groom comes, meaning Jesus. It's the story of the return of Jesus Christ. They were ready. 
they had been preparing and planning in order for God to come back and to receive them. And the other five, they took off running last minute, last minute. When you leave things to the last minute, you'll always be stressed. When you leave things to the last minute and you're always procrastinating, just kind of just, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. You know what it does? Man, it really just puts you in a place of just, ugh. And you just start feeling all these weird emotions. And you just kind of feel like, man, I'm not accomplishing anything. You know, you go out through your day and you're just like, did I get anything done? But when you're always planning and preparing, I'm telling you, there's something about that, that preparation that leads to the manifestation of that very thing that you're believing God to accomplish in your life. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans... Not to harm you, but to prosper you. Plans to give you hope with a future. Come on, this is the season for both. Not only your life, guys, but I pray in Jesus' name that as we get ready to celebrate Christmas on the 24th and the 25th, I know that a lot of people celebrate on Eve and on, on Christmas Day, but check this out. We can prepare and plan. Maybe you've been at odds with your family. Maybe there's been some funk in your family. Maybe there's been some funk in you. How about let's just plan, let's prepare. And let's believe that, you know what? I'm going to start changing that attitude. But first I must acknowledge. What does acknowledge mean? Acknowledge means, man, you know what? Come to the realization, admit the situation. And then come to God. There's three Ps I'm going to give you real quickly. Three Ps that God, that God showed us. Three Ps. Number one, one thing God showed us is that he prepared big. He always prepared big. Look, I mean, look, look what we're celebrating. Christmas, Christmas is so big that it gets celebrated throughout the entire globe. The whole earth is celebrating Christmas. Prepare big. Proverbs 19.21 again, it says, a person may have many plans in their heart, but the Lord's purpose wins. His purpose will always win. So you got to plan big. Number two, or prepare big. Number two, plan big. So there's prepare and then there's plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. So for God so loved the world that he prepared his son, Jesus Christ, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And then his plan was that he says, now I give you my spirit. Come on. I give you my spirit. I give you my presence. Now go and accomplish everything I purposed for you to do. And number three, you have to pray big got to pray big you know the only prayer that never gets answered is the one you didn't pray for we know what we want but we don't pray for it we know we I want to get I want to get healing but you never pray for healing I want I want to I do want to be happy pastor I want this joy experience but you never pray about it Philippians says, pray about everything. My toe hurts. Pray. My attitude sucks. Pray. Because the only prayer that does not get answered is the one you didn't pray. Look at the verse for pray big. You guys have that for me? It says, always be joyful. That's not easy to do on Christmas. But notice what the plan that God has in order for you to stay joyful. It's prayer. He says, never stop praying. You want to always be joyful? Never stop praying. You want to always be joyful? Never stop praying. You want to keep the joy of the Lord? Never stop praying. And he says, give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Would you all please stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. There should be a candle on your chair. Can I get a candle? Thank you. Thank you. I, I want us to, to make a, a declaration that as we prepare for this coming Christmas, we're days away, that we're going to go home and we're going to plan. You're going to plan to have the best time with your family. You're going to plan to, to get along with whoever you've had odds with, man, you're going to prepare 
the table where you're going to celebrate the greatest king. He will be the centerpiece of your table. You're going to prepare and get ready for 2018. Come on. Everybody wants to win the game, but no, one's, no one wants to show up to practice. Huh? No. We're going to prepare. We're going to plan. We're going we're gonna to prepare big. We're going to plan big. And we're going to pray big. Let's say this again. Number one, you're going to what? Prepare big. You're going to plan big. And you're going to pray big. You got to do those three things. We got to get ready. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.